Welcome to Renewal, a webcast that will revive your heart and set your spirit aflame with a love for Jesus Christ. We've, we've been having so much fun in these, these webcasts that we've been doing. I, I get to interview and talk to some of my friends that I don't see very often, and I have one of them here with us today, Dale Schlafer. Dale, man, it's good to see you Thanks, again. Sam. And, and uh, we're here at the Cove uh, for the Heart Cry for Revival conference, and, and we, we've both been involved in this conference for quite a while. And Dale, you are uh, president of the Center for World Revival and Awakening. And uh, why don't you, first of all, give us a little of your background, who you are, and, sure. and, uh, and why you have a heart, why you're here at this conference, and why you have this organization <laughs> for revival. Tell us a little bit about that. Well, I was a, a pastor for 28 years, and in uh, 1994, I was part of the Promise Keepers early movement, and uh, Coach McCartney at that point said, Dale, would you come and lead uh, the pastor's conference, which we did in Atlanta, where we had 42,000 pastors. And... Um, at that conference, uh, because I was leading it, I had an opportunity to, to shape it. And uh, my heart, uh, in the, the shaping of that conference, all of God's sort of background and preparation about the issue of revival came together in that, uh, in that conference. We built the whole conference around the issue of revival. And uh, I recognized, probably for the first time, that this was a a driving force in my life. I, then I started looking back at my preaching, my heart in, in the church, and I recognized that I was always after revival. Yeah, let me back up and ask you a couple of questions. Promise Keepers is, first of all, most people know, uh, but there are a lot of people from internationally who may not be aware that this was a movement in America among men that uh, where men started meeting together making a commitment to the Lord, to their wives, their spouses, and keeping each other accountable. Am I describing that Absolutely correctly? Absolutely correct. And okay. uh, started in 1991 with uh, 4,500 guys in a half of a basketball court. And uh, by 1998, we had a million point three men show up on the mall in Washington, D.C., uh, for a sacred assembly, which was part of revival. Which can only really be uh, described as a move of God's spirit. Absolutely. Uh, there's, I, I don't think... I don't know of an organization that, that is great enough to put something like that together, make it happen in that few years to, to go from point A to point B and with an incredible... Randy Phillips used to say, he was our president, he said, nobody's this good. <laughs> That's right. That's right. And, and what we need. Now, the reason I ask you about Promise Keepers, do you believe, and, and you also said something about the pastor's conference, which you had responsibility right. for, is there something with men? Is there something with pastors that you have a special burden about or you feel that God's wanting to do? Or, or I mean, that seems to be your niche. Tell me about that. It, it is my niche, and, and, it, and it, it sort of came uh, as it developed. It just sort of happened. I, 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 I first of all, recognize the importance of men. And, and in fact, I, I, as I look back, I really built my ministry around men. I didn't know there was a men's ministry. I just knew that men, if you get the man, you get the whole family. And mm -hmm. so I went after men. And uh, then as a result of that, uh, I then uh, saw the importance of uh, pastors leading men. And uh, that was then how I uh, got hooked up with Promise Keepers because... Uh, Coach McCartney had this vision for reaching men, and I had a heart to reach pastors, and so we put those two uh, together uh, and hoping that the pastors would take the lead to lead their men to become godly, uh, revived men who would then see the lost come to know Christ and then see the uh, transformation of the society. You, you know, in my own life in ministry, I, I'm an evangelist. I, I call myself a revivalist evangelist because I believe that evangelism is best done when the church is revived. Amen. But uh, I, uh, my first 10 years, I was a youth evangelist. Uh, the next eight years, I was a pastor. Mm -hmm. And then since that time, for the past 20-something years, I've been in full-time international evangelism. But when I went to pastor, uh, man, I was so discouraged. I mean, pastors today have a tough time. Tough I mean, it's a... It's really difficult. And, you know, I thought everybody's going to be so excited about Jesus. And, man, we're going to, you know, I was pastor in Germany. And so I thought, man, you know, American military community, we're going to win Europe to Christ. <laughs> Boy, did I have a rude awakening. Man, everybody was worried about what color the carpet was or, you know, the chairs or something yeah. like this. And, yeah. and I said, oh, Lord, what do I do? And uh, 
I heard a guy speak, uh, Max Barnett. I don't know mm-hmm. if you know, know Max. He uh, was Baptist student director at Oklahoma University, and he had a great discipleship ministry. And he was talking about uh, to pastors about discipling men. And so he said, start meeting at 6 o'clock or some yep. ungodly hour of the morning where only the ones who are really committed will come. And so I did. I started meeting at 6 o'clock with a group of men. I made it open to whoever would like to come and just started teaching them to pray. And God moved. Yep. And my goal, our goal was to every man have a quiet time. My wife started the same thing with ladies, the same goal. And as, as people begin to pray and see God, God began to do a work in their lives. And our church grew immensely, not by some great church growth plan, right. but by people, they were walking with God. And out of the overflow of their yeah. lives, they started sharing Christ. Yeah, and, and I think, isn't that exactly what happens in revival? I mean, uh, I often say that uh, re- I use an illustration about revival with a sponge. And I take a, a, sp- a normal sponge, it's just dry, and I'll hold it up and say, well, now, what's, tell me about this sponge. And people will yell out, well, it's dry, it's hard, and so forth. I say, now, if I put a little water on it, does it help? No. But if I put it in this bucket of water, and I let it sit there, and I have one that's been in there, I say, what happens? And I said, my favorite definition of revival is one that Duncan Campbell used, of people saturated with God. Mm-hmm. So as the sponge is in here, what's happening? Oh, it's getting saturated. And I pull it up, and of course the water runs out. I say, that's what happens in revival. We just leak Jesus. Everywhere yeah. we go, yeah. we leak Jesus. And you don't have to say, go share your faith. Why? Because I'm just leaking Jesus, whether I'm in the army barracks, or I'm in the office, or I'm with the kids at school. Yeah. And, and, you know, and we really did. I, I, you know, I look back on, you know, normally revival, you look back on and say, oh, hey, that was revival. <laughs> While you're in it, you don't know. You know, you're saying, oh, God, we need you. But, you know, I look back on that, and I see that was a time of yeah. revival in our church. I had a, an evangelist friend come over and preach. Who, who he's, he's gone on to be uh-huh. the Lord now, but he preached all over America. And, and I, I asked him, I said, well, what's, a, what's our church like? We're, we're an American military community in Germany. What's it like compared to other churches in America? And he said something interesting to me. He said, after the service is over, normally in America, the women are all coming to me asking me questions about my message. He said, here, it's the men coming to uh, me. <laughs> asking me questions about yeah. my message. And, and, uh, and that's nothing wrong with women coming in. Right. And I'm not saying that. But I think that men, you know, men need to be challenged. And you get men who are hungry for God, and, and God can do great and, things. And that's exactly what you did with your guys at six. I'm convinced that men respond to challenge. 